Hello fellow vintage Ray-Ban lovers out there, hope you're well and welcome to another video. So today I want to talk to you about territories and special editions within those territories. So for another word for territories, if you don't know what that means, we could call that regions, okay? Regions of the world, world regions, or even more simpler, um, world marketplaces, okay? So Ray-Ban, vintage Ray-Ban, had a number of territories around the world that they sold their sunglasses to. So the most obvious one, of course, is the United States of America, because that's where the sunglasses um, were originally made and founded and so on and so forth. I can add to that Canada, so you have United States and Canada. Another territory, another region was uh, Europe, which is the region that I'm in. So within Europe, um, if I start with my own country, which was the UK, there was also Germany, there was also France, and there was also Italy. You could potentially add on Spain onto that as well, but the four that I mentioned right from the beginning, UK, France, Germany, and Italy, were the, were the bulk of the European sales. The next territory, or the next marketplace, would be the Far East. So the main territories, or the main regions in the Far East, that vintage Ray-Ban concentrated their efforts, would have been Japan, and would have been Hong Kong. Now, I'm telling you about these particular marketplaces because these are the areas or the places where um, the citizens of those particular areas had more disposable income or had more spare cash in their pocket to be able to purchase vintage Ray-Ban sunglasses. Now bear in mind you, if you follow or if you're an avid collector or if you um, purchase Ray-Bans, either vintage Ray-Bans or even the modern Ray-Bans that now Luxottica um, sell you, um, the cost of those sunglasses in comparison to uh, other sunglasses is much higher. It's exactly the same as it is now as it was then. Ray-Ban sunglasses were just fundamentally, you know, they were, um, we could call a better pair of sunglasses, um, but a lot of that is down to branding and down to marketing, but we could say that actually, because of their history, because of their quality, um, their actual price point was much higher. So disposable income was very much part of um, Ray-Ban's um, business plan to obviously target those people. I can hear you in the background, okay, saying, but what about all the other regions? You know, yes, there are other regions. There's South America, okay, that's one region. There's um, Thailand, there's Malaysia, there's Australia, there's New Zealand. Uh, you know, there's Spain, there's Israel, there's Saudi Arabia. There's all of those territories, all of those regions, but all of those come a little bit later. All of those come mainly in the 90s. But the regions, which is America, Europe, and the Far East, those are the ones that were um, targeted very early on. So, you know, obviously from the late 30s, but... Um, worldwide, you're probably looking 60s, late 60s onwards, okay? Now, I want to obviously uh, touch upon territories, regions, because certain sunglasses uh, Ray-Ban released in that particular marketplace, that particular region, solely for the people who lived in those areas. So let's take, for example, uh, in Europe, okay, so in the UK, there, on, uh, there is a pair of sunglasses, which is a large metal, 
which is inscribed UKBL. That particular frame was only released in the United Kingdom. With those frame comes a very special sunglasses case which actually says made in the United Kingdom. Those particular sunglasses, that particular case was made and released specifically for citizens of the United Kingdom. If we look at Germany, for instance, the LIC frames stroke the made in West Germany frames were made in Germany, okay? So a lot of the sunglasses that have LIC or made in West Germany is going to be very difficult for somebody who lives in the United States to come across that particular pair of sunglasses. But somebody in Germany or somebody in Europe, it's going to be easier for them to pick up that particular model because it's obviously closer to where they live. So, if we talk about Far East models that were specifically released for citizens within Hong Kong, Japan, Malaysia, uh, um, Thailand, Singapore, all of those areas, the sunglass models, if you look on a Wayfarer, for instance, if you look on the inside of the temple, sometimes you may see a star which is actually stamped into uh, the temple after the wording of Wayfarer. That star, okay, means that it is a Far East model, which basically means it's a little bit of a smaller model um, in comparison to the other models that were um, released because people from the Far East, their bone structure, their face structure is a little bit smaller than the rest of the world, okay? So you will never see a Far East specific model being released in the United States or being released in Europe. It was only released in the Far East. I hope you're keeping up with me because it's a, it's a little bit of, or it's quite a bit to take in, okay? So, to put it into simple terms, specific models were created, were released for specific territories. Now, back in the day, okay, they weren't so lucky to be able to easily buy and sell sunglasses internationally. We are very lucky people in this day and age that we have the internet where we can actually trade worldwide. I, I don't need to meet you. All I need to do is email you to text you, you know, and we can talk and we can um, uh, finalise a transaction and do a deal without ever meeting each other, okay? Um, without even using a telephone. We just do it by email, do it by text message, do it by some platform um, to be able to finalise a deal. I buy the item from you, you send me the item, Bob's your uncle, we have just done a world trade. But back in the day, back in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, and even the whole of the 90s really, trading internationally was quite difficult. You had to go to the country, okay? And to actually specifically purchase that item in that country and then bring it back to your own country. Or if you went on holiday, you would then purchase that pair of sunglasses, you would wear it whilst you're on holiday, and then you would bring it back. But nowadays, obviously, if I see something on the website, which is based in, I don't know, in bloody Australia or somewhere, I could purchase that and the guy would send it to me. And, you know what I mean, I don't have to go to the country anymore to purchase that specific item. So, that leads me nicely onto what I want to show you today, which is a territory-specific model. Not only is it, is it a territory specific model, 
it is a special edition within the territory specific model. It's, 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 it's something to behold, ladies and gentlemen. I am just so very, very excited, so blessed to have this model in my collection. Simply because of where I live and simply because of where these sunglasses are from. There is no way in this world that I would be able to purchase the model that I am going to show you in the UK. Because it, ne it was never released in the UK. Even if I went on holiday to America. I wouldn't find it there either because it was never released in America. It was only ever released in the Far East. Only ever. And specifically, it was only ever released in Japan. Let me take a breath. <sighs> it is that special. And without further ado, this is probably... No, it's not probably. This is in my current top three uh, model in my collection. Top three, because of where it's from. Anybody who is not from the Far East watching this video today, you need, it's one of those models that you need to have in your collection. Because there is no way on this earth Unless somebody went to this particular country, went to Japan back in the day and brought it back to your home country. There is no way on this God planet that you would have this, that you will be able to purchase this. So I want you to understand the importance, the value of these sunglasses. Let me shut up. Let me show you what we have for you today. And then let's talk about it. 